and welcome to Talking TSM, the Game House's talk show about TSM's LCS team. I'm Robert Haynes, and I will be your host and your guide into the world of TSM's LCS team. Um, yeah, welcome back, everybody. I am really excited because we got we got some news. You know, right before the beginning of the split, uh, which will be a week from tomorrow. Very exciting, if you ask me. Very exciting stuff. So, you know, we will be jumping into a couple different things. The first thing that we will be discussing will be the schedule. Um, it was finally released today, or yesterday, I should say. Uh, recording this on Thursday, as I normally do. Uh, but the schedule, yep, was was released, so we, we know who TSM are playing. And uh, as a reminder, it is 27 games this time around. So pretty excited for that. We'll go into that. We'll talk a little bit about TSM Academy. We'll talk about TSM Amateur. Yes, the third team for TSM. Give you guys some quick updates on them, and then we'll go into some stuff about next week's episode, which will be the start of potentially something new. Well, definitely something new, but we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, first, let's start with the schedule. TSM will, weirdly enough, be starting the season off, and I mean like not 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 that this part is weird that they're you know starting their season off against team liquid but that it's TSM playing in game 1 of the LCS and not cloud 9 against TL I I don't know how to feel about that to be completely honest with you I think C9 plays somebody like Golden Guardians on on day 1 and they play later at night um, because the timing in the LCS is something that I've thought has always been strange. Um, like how they do their schedule and whatnot. I always would figure that, you know, for the 3 p.m. games on a Friday, that they would likely put some of the l less desirable games so that people could get home and watch. Now... Obviously, game one of the split is an important one. And, you know, just there there are a lot of teams that do this, whether it's the NFL, the NBA, MLB. Um, not always, but I know at least in the NFL, I'm pretty sure it's always. They'll have the two Super Bowl teams play each other in game one as kind of like a rematch. Uh, again, pretty sure that, that that's how it happens. You could correct me if I'm wrong. But either way, the idea would would, would still work, right? Um, but instead, they have TSM versus TL. And I I wonder I wonder what's going through the schedule makers' heads when they're like, hey, you know what? Let's let's have that third place game. Let's have those teams go at it, right? Um I don't know, maybe Reggie paid them off. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's strange that they're starting that off. But either way, starting a week from tomorrow, so June 4th, um, well, I just realized I'll be recording this podcast on my birthday next week. Did not even consider that. Yay me. Uh, anyways, June 4th, Thursday, back on track here. TSM will start the season off at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific against Team Liquid, which should be a fun and interesting game. It looks like TSM, by the way, have already started practicing. Not a huge surprise, but they like to give the players some time off. I had personally thought that they were going to be, you know, doing this a little bit earlier, but... I guess I really wanted to give them some time off to kind of figure things out, but I guess two weeks of practice is probably enough now that the team's actually back together. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through each week really quickly of who they play. 
Um, I'm going to talk about which stretch of games I think are the hardest. I'll, I'll first do like which week I think is the hardest, and then I'll do stretch of games because I'll be honest with you, there wasn't really a week where I'm sitting here like shaking in my boots. Um, I think TSM have a pretty balanced schedule but that also means that there's really no super easy weeks so you know we'll we'll go over that but uh yeah so here's a breakdown week one we got tl evil geniuses and golden guardians uh week two hunter thieves fly quest and clg week three immortals dignitas cloud nine so that is your first bout of the round robin you start it with tl you end it with c9 and then you got Immortals like right in the middle. So, you know, it's not bad. Not bad. Uh, then starting the second round, Robin, we started off with FlyQuest, EG, and TL in week four. Then Dignitas, Immortals, and C9 in week five. CLG, Golden Guardians, and 100 Thieves to round out the second round, Robin. So we get TL and C9 on a Sunday. We actually have three weeks in a row of tough Sunday games. Cloud9, TL, and then Cloud9 again. And then, honestly, even 100 Thieves. Like, four, five Sunday, No, six Sundays. Oh, man, they set up Sundays. Okay, real quick, listen to this. In week three, we got C9 on Sunday. I just noticed this. TL, we got week four. C9 in week five. 100 Thieves in week six. And then TL in week seven. And then... C9 in week 8. Wow. So, what is that? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so six Sunday games in a row that are really important for TSM. Crazy. Just notice that. All right. And then to, to end it all, well, I, I think I don't, I don't think I did week six. So then week six, CLG, Golden Guardians, and 100 Thieves. And then we head into the final round, Robin. FlyQuest. Immortals and TL in week seven. Evil Geniuses, Golden Guardians, and C9 in week eight. And then to round it all out, Hunter Thieves, CLG, and Dignitas. So those are the the weeks for TSM. Um now I'm gonna, you know, take a stab at what I think will probably be the the easiest week first. Uh, and this one was, it's tough because I really think that only Golden Guardians are the, like, truly not great team. Um, but I do think that there are some teams that will, will definitely fall off. I, I personally have, like, Immortals, Dignitas in that range. I think FlyQuest, FlyQuest will be a little bit better. So I it was it was kind of tough. Um, I think CLG will be better, by the way, too. So like it, it seemed like TSM would have two pretty winnable games and then one not so winnable game, and then two pretty winnable games and one not so winnable game. I, I feel like that's going to be kind of the way that things go down this uh, split for them. And so when I'm looking at what would theoretically be their easiest week, um, it, it comes in week. What is this? six where they have clg golden guardians and hundred thieves um the main reason for that i i actually think clg will be not that bad um but basically every week tsm have hundred thieves c9 or tl no surprise there but those are the top other three teams I think Hunter Thieves are very clearly the worst of those teams. So then I looked at, all right, well, who else does TSM play? Weirdly enough, in every, like, and I, I don't know if they did this, on, again, on purpose or not, but every time we play Hunter Thieves, we also play CLG. So I was like, okay, then it comes down to Golden Guardians, Dignitas, or FlyQuest, and I think Golden Guardians are the worst. So there you go. That'll be our easiest week. Now, when looking at our toughest week, this one was also kind of tough because there are... It's not like we play TL and C9 at the same time. But I do believe that week four, 
so you know we'll get our easiest and our toughest one in the round second round robin um i do believe that week four will be pretty tough i think FlyQuest will be better like i said i think eg will be still strong and tl so FlyQuest, eg and tl um i think that's going to be a pretty pivotal week especially after the first round robin where we can really cement ourselves as a team that starts out slow too you know, I think the second round Robin is going to be really important. And if we can go, you know, three and O in week four, I think that that's a really good sign because, you know, I don't know. I, I just, that's just the way I feel. I, I think that that would be really nice for us. Obviously if we go three and O every week, that'd be really great, but that's definitely not going to happen. So yeah. So those are, are my, you know, again, easiest week. I I'm looking at week six CLG golden guardian center thieves. Hardest week, FlyQuest, Evil Geniuses, and Team Liquid in week four. Now, I think there is a a stretch of games that are going to be pretty tough for for our boys. Um, I think I think there's I think there's a couple of them to be honest, but I think well I'll I'll do the one that that I I thought would be like second hardest. Um, in a, what is this? Five game span. Yeah. Five game span. Uh, TSM get TL, then evil geniuses, golden guardians is a nice little break, but then C9 and hundred thieves. So, you know, four out of those five games are going to really matter. And if CLG and Dignitas are, are really, you know, good, then the, you know, the last seven games of the year could be a tough run to the end. It's not going to be like last split where we had a nice little bit of a break ish mental break in the last week or so. So that's a tough, tough, uh, a tough time period. Um, but I also think that this like five to seven game span is actually going to be tougher. Uh, C nine fly quest, evil geniuses, TL, those four games very specifically. So this comes at the end of week three and again, the beginning of week four, we talked about that. But then that very next week, they get Dignitas, Immortals, and C9. If Dignitas are able to perform like they did during the regular season last year, or last split, then they're going to be tough. I still think Immortals fall off. That's their one little saving grace. But then they got C9. So, you know, I mean, it's it's not like... I guess what I'm saying is, like, I'm not looking at this schedule... Like, there was a very clear week last split where I was like, oh, crap, like, that's going to be tough. Um, and then there were a couple weeks where I was like, oh, yeah, those will be pretty easy. So, you know, there's the the schedule. I, I The schedule is, like, super balanced, in my opinion, which is kind of surprising. I, I did not expect the schedule to be as balanced as it, as it seemingly is. Um, I think that the the schedule makers actually did a pretty good job. Like I'm really glad we don't have a TL or a C9 or a hundred thieves back to back the TL evil geniuses to start the split, I think. And then the evil geniuses TL again in, in week four, the more I look at it, I'm thinking week four is going to be pretty tough actually. But, um, I think starting the season off against two teams that normally start the season off pretty strongly. Uh, they normally you know, from at least from this team that we saw last split, you know, TL started off strong, found some problems in the middle and then figured it out. The end evil geniuses started off strong. Middle was pretty good too. And then the end was really rough for them. So I'm wondering, you know, especially with the change to evil geniuses, the, they, they dropped deftly in case if you didn't know, and they picked up Danny, their evil geniuses prodigies, I believe. Or it's like Mirage, Evil Geniuses Mirage or something. I forget what they called their third team. But their third Evil Geniuses third team, um, they brought their AD carry all the way up to uh, the LCS, which a lot of people thought that he was pretty good. I don't know that we thought he was that ready. But hey, you know, in one split, this new academy system producing a new player would be awesome. Like a really good player would be great uh, for the scene as a whole. So yeah, that's that's our schedule. Um, a lot of great games in there. Sundays specifically are going to be really important for us. So got to make sure that you're watching, uh, for those. Uh, the other thing that I found really interesting when looking at this schedule is we play a lot of 6 PM slash 3 PM, you know, Pacific games. 
I have no idea why, but I would say the majority, almost like 67%, so you know, two and three games, it felt like we're at 6 p.m. Um, it's probably closer to 50%, but still, like, it's very rare that a team plays at the exact same time regularly. Um, like, I think there's even a stretch where TSM will play, like, not three games in a week, but two games in a week, and then the first game in a next week or something like that um, at 6 p.m. Eastern at that time slot. So very interesting. Um, I wonder if maybe they believe that a lot of TSM fans are on the East Coast um, or, or, you know, Central area or even, you know, European. Um, so they want to make sure they get those games in. You know, most of the time the late night games are like, you know, Golden Guardians versus Immortals or something like that. So it's very rare that you're going to want the prime time games uh, there. I wonder if that is considered a prime time for them. I don't know. Again, there's there's a lot of interesting things that we're learning, especially now that I'm personally like really looking at the schedule in, in this way. Uh, you know, in, in the past, I just watched the games and very much enjoyed them. This is my first year really like studying the team and really, you know, trying to learn the game at a more uh, cerebral level and, and looking at things like the schedule in a, in a more analytical mindset. So uh, trying to think the way that them, uh, them their um, schedule makers do. So, you know. Yeah, so that's our schedule. Um, Here are my, here's my record prediction. Now, I will probably change this next week when I go over everything. But as of right now, I have them going 19 and 8. Okay, that's a, that's a 70% win percentage, which is a little higher than last split. Uh, Last splits was, um, I believe, 60 seven repeating or 66.7 repeating whatever um they won two out of three games essentially um i have them you know finishing the season at 31 and 14 because remember the you know the 12 and 6 record from um last split does carry over i i do have them finishing in third most likely behind tl and c9 i think they'll be behind tl by one game um but, you know, 19 and 8 could be good enough to tie or be in second again. I mean, we saw that, you know, TSM and TL tied at a 12 and 6 record. I think that it's very possible that they could, you know, it's it's very possible that, you know, TL could go 32 and, and 13. I don't think that would really surprise anybody. Um, I think even C9, you know, I, I know that they're, what, like two games up. Man, how do I not have this up? Sorry, guys. Give me two seconds here. Um, oh, my goodness. Why is it doing this? Oh, yeah. They're only one game up. Okay, so they're 13-5. and five. So, like, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me either to see C9 drop a couple games. Now, to be honest, they looked really good in, in a lot of their games. They just couldn't finish them out at MSI. So I, I do think Cloud9 come in as a pretty heavy favorite to win, but we'll see. I would love to be wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot to be done. Like, you know, reminder, TSM only have a one game lead on Hundred Thieves and Dignitas and only a two game lead over Evil Geniuses. Everybody else after that is is kind of screwed. Like Immortals, FlyQuest, CLG, and Golden Guardians would have to make a pretty miraculous run to to try to qualify for one of the top four spots. I, I wouldn't put it past a team like CLG, maybe even FlyQuest, but we'll have to see. Those teams have some things they have to figure out. I think CLG was figuring them out. We'll see about FlyQuest and their new awesome logo. Which, if you haven't seen, they, they did rebrand again. But I think this time they finally got what I would argue is a very strong logo. I still don't love the name, but I think that the logo is pretty awesome. So, anyways. Um, again, looking back on it, I got a 19-8. and eight. I think they lose to either C9 or TL twice. But they go 2-1 and one against the other one. So, we're playing them three times. 
I, I would not surprise me to see them. They could 3-0 one of them. I really doubt it. But it wouldn't surprise me to see them even go potentially 2-1 and one against both teams. I think TSM, especially during the midseason, once they've kind of gotten things figured out, they normally are pretty strong. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see like how much carries over because we were such slow starters last split. I would love to see us kind of get off to a really hot start uh, this split, but we'll see. Uh, I then have them dropping two games out of the out of the nine um at least two games to either evil geniuses hundred thieves or clg and that means spread across both i have them three owing one of the three of them and then either losing you know either going one and two against them or um you know more likely going two and one against two of them and three and owing another one um i i, I think that those i think those three are kind of like the next tier like the next best like they'll finish fourth fifth or sixth um and then i think they'll just drop three random games because they'll just do what they do where they forget how to play league of legends um you know like they did against dignitas and FlyQuest for some reason i mean there's no reason <sighs> there's no reason why tsm could not have been 18 and 2 no 16 and 2 sorry there's no reason why they couldn't have been. No reason why they couldn't have been. Especially 2 0 Liquid. But I think 12 and 6 obviously is fine. Um, but I do think that they'll lose most of their games early on. I don't I don't anticipate once they're in a group a groove, excuse me, that they will lose those games later. Um, here's how I have them finishing the season. Uh, in terms of against these these top opponents uh, slash teams that they struggled against maybe last split. So C9, I have them going uh, two and three, which means that that's the team. You know, I said, I think that they lose twice to a team. I think it's going to be to C9. Um, I still think they beat them one time. I think it'll be a great game, whatever game that is, um, whatever Sunday game it is. Again, just realizing that they play C9 every single time on a Sunday. Dang, schedule makers. You guys are really big braining it right now. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so yeah, so I have them dropping a game. So I have them going one and two against them, but two and three overall in the season, which means that C9 would hold the advantage over a tiebreaker on us. I actually have them going four and one against TL because I think they'll go two and one. They have the two and oh already. That's a huge tiebreaker for TSM. Um, I, that's why it was important that I said that they would be third by one game. Uh, I do think that TL dropped two of their games against TSM. Uh, for some reason, just during the regular season, TSM looked a lot better. Would not surprise me to see them go 2-1. and one. Uh, Against 100 Thieves, I do have them dropping one of their games. That's one of the two uh, losses uh, to either EG, 100 Thieves, or CLG. I have them going four and one. Same thing with Evil Geniuses, four and one, where I do think that they will, or no, I have them um, beating CLG or EG. I forgot that they lost to EG at the end of last split randomly. Um, so I have them, you know, sweeping, going three and O oh against Evil Geniuses. I think Danny will be a good addition. I think it'll take him some time though, and against um, TSM, I just. I just think that TSM will have the advantage there. So 3-0, but 4-1 overall. Again, tiebreaker win for them. CLG, I do actually have them dropping a game to CLG. I think CLG is going to be way better than people think. They finished the regular season really strong. Uh, they got most of their wins in the last two weeks when they finally had the full team that they meant to have put together. I would not be surprised to see CLG take games off of all four of the top teams. At some point or another, they're really strong veterans. They get, I think, all four top teams once in the first two weeks. That's going to make them really strong. Don't quote me on that. I did not like study their schedule, but I, I, I think I remember seeing that. So, I mean, either way, I think they'll come out really strong. I think they've got something to prove, and I think they really want to make a run at the playoffs. They're technically only one game behind for a playoff spot, but... There's a lot of 
prideful veterans and not in like a bad way but they they know what they want to do they know how they will find success um and i think that they're going to be a very strong team so i do see us losing one of our uh you know one of our two games against you know eg hundred thieves or clg i i do think we drop one to clg but we still have a 4-1 in case if the absolute worst happens and either clg just makes an unbelievable run towards the top of the table or you know, we drop for some reason. Against FlyQuest, I think we 3-0. Just going to be honest with you. I don't think they looked very good. There's no chance that we that we drop two games again to FlyQuest. There's just no way. Uh, they We have had to have figured out how to beat Jose Diodo at this point. Right? Right? Mm, yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> we'll see. And then I'm actually predicting Dignitas to have the biggest fall off. They looked terrible in playoffs. Um they are i i don't think they're a one hit wonder kind of thing but i don't think they're gonna be super duper good but i do have us 3 owing them in the summer um I, I that could be a team that we randomly lose a game to but i still don't find it to be likely and then i think we get the uh the 3-2 advantage over them so we hold advantages at least according to my predictions over everybody except for cloud nine we'll have to see Obviously, they got to play the games, right? Um, any team can realistically lose to any team in the LCS right now. But the one thing I will say is I am hopeful for the region as a whole. I am hopeful for our team. I think that the more time that TSM are together, the better they are going to get. I think they are going to learn a lot from the mistakes, whether it was drafting or the way that they just played uh, during the last uh last split i think that that's going to be extremely important for them moving forward um you know i yeah i don't know i'm, I'm hopeful i mean 19 and 8 is not bad by the way you know again it's basically the same as going 12 and 6 essentially um you know i i, I don't know i'm Maybe I'm too hopeful for this team at times, but they looked really strong going into the playoffs. I I think that TL humbled them and reminded them that they still had things that they needed to work on. But I think that they clearly showed that they're the third best team. The biggest potential opposition for us going to Worlds is going to be Hunter Thieves. Signing Abadage is no joke. And he's going to have 27 games to figure it out with that team. And we all knew that mid was probably their weakest point. And there's no way someday has back-to-back -back terrible splits. And FBI is probably the best AD carry in the league. So that team's going to be scary. I, I definitely think that team could be a problem for us. Um, and so we're going to just have to hope that we are on the opposite side of the bracket of them and that TL or C9 can knock them out for us and then we don't have to play them at all. Be ideal. Be really nice. We'll see. Um, we'll, we'll see. As a reminder, top eight teams make the playoffs. Um, you know, the bottom two teams, if I remember correctly. The top two teams, I think, get a bye. The bottom two teams start off automatically in the lower bracket uh and then or it might be the bottom four teams start off in the lower bracket and then the top four teams battle it out i don't i don't really remember if they changed it or not i I'd, I'd have to go back and look but um we'll go over that when the time comes we've got we've got 10 weeks until those conversations probably like close to eight weeks uh before those conversations start happening we'll be nearing the end of the summer so yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, all right, so let's quickly go into Academy and Amateur. TSM Academy are going to be starting next week. I'm really excited to watch Hyper uh, play in the jungle. Uh, again, pretty young kid. Um, excited for him to get his chance with TSM Academy. Uh, you know, if you didn't know, they got rid of Babip. Um, they also have Yersan starting the whole time this time which i think is going to be a huge boon for them um and then it's going to be interesting to see who's going to start at mid 
you know i mean they brought in somebody to to really kind of i don't know uh i would say challenge sword which personally i i'm always up for you know people having to to earn their spot in terms of you know having to beat somebody out i don't think takeover is going to be the person who will i'm not going to say it who will push sword out of of his spot but we'll see um i think i think sword's gonna earn it i think this will be a really nice like they're putting a fire under his butt because they know how good sword can be um and so i'm okay with this strategy of really trying to light a fire under him and 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 make him prove that he's not just some you know god tier solo queue slash amateur you know beating the snot out of people player that he's actually an academy worthy player that will push himself to be ready for the lcs by the time power of evil leaves i think that's their hope <coughs> oh my goodness sorry <coughs> you ever take a breath and it just i don't know hit you weird okay anyways um now we're on to tsm amateur so reminder if you didn't go, go back and watch or listen slash watch. A couple weeks ago, we went over the TSM amateur team as was requested uh, by some awesome people who are in the TSM Discord, as a talking TSM Discord. As a reminder, you guys should uh, join the talking TSM Discord. There will be a link below. Um, you can also just ask me for a link on Twitter at TGH Robert Haynes. <laughs> Plugging something in my own show. Who would have guessed it? Anyways, um, so TSM Amateur, they play like any other amateur team. So, like, if you and I were to start a team and we were, you know, master, grandmaster, you know, challenger type players, um, you know, we could enter into these tournaments, but there are qualifiers. you got to beat some of these other teams. Um, so, real quickly, TSM went 2-1 and one overall. They went 5-3 and three in those games, so 2-1 and one in the series. Five and three to qualify for Challengers Uprising, which is the first circuit of the amateur uh, scene. Uh, they were able to take down Last Resort. They lost to Supernova. Supernova is like one of the best amateur teams. Uh, like they always have some of the just some of the best players. So uh, you know, no real su surprise there. I think the team's still trying to you know figure it out. Uh, but then they were able to beat Zodiac Esports and qualify in officially uh they started their challengers uprising bracket so they're uh they're in i believe it's group a yeah they're in group a with area of effect esports evil geniuses prodigies where danny came from before going up to eg and revival esports revival esports have been there for a while evil geniuses prodigies are obviously new and i think area of effect esports are new i don't really remember them um from when i was super into this scene uh, they've got they've got some pretty good players. Um, Dark Wings, Fizzy was our obviously our old uh, academy support. Um, RBM is a pretty strong uh, jungler, and then Faisal looked pretty interesting. Uh, the reason I can say that is I did skim the games. Um, Thanks to, uh, again, the Talking TSM Discord, where the games were posted. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think TSM, a cat, or Amateur, excuse me, uh, they looked okay. So they, they beat Revival, what looks to be pretty handily. I can't find any information on those games, to be honest. Um, I tried looking up the match history, didn't exist. Tried looking up VODs, couldn't find them. Um, there were VODs of the uh, Area of Effect esports games, um, and so I was able to watch those. Drafts were interesting. I uh, saw Gwen for the first time in the top lane. Viego made his way into the mid lane, which was very interesting in both games. I I don't know how to feel if Viego's in the mid lane. We talked about this last week. If the meta shifts to where Viego's in the mid lane, I don't know if that's going to be great for power of evil just gonna be honest with you guys melee assassin mid laners don't seem like the thing that he would be great against but we'll see i mean this is amateur that doesn't mean that we're gonna see it you know all the way at the top level 
You can take some of these drafts with a grain of salt. Um, you know, I, I always remember wondering why are there certain things that are being played that aren't, you know, being played in all this other stuff, right? So I was just, I was a little surprised, uh, to say the least. So, um, anywho, uh, so this is the first circuit. There are three circuits, as I understand it. Um, the winner of circuit one automatically makes into proving grounds. The winner of circuit two automatically makes into proving grounds. The top two teams, uh, meaning the two teams playing in the finals of circuit three, will automatically make it as well. So those those four, and then the top twelve teams, so teams that have earned points, like a point system throughout the system, will get a chance at qualifiers. And then the top six teams from the qualifier event, uh, for proving grounds, will then play. So they have like a full season um in terms of amateur uh the game started just on monday a couple days ago um the first circuit event will go through uh june 8th it looks like then the next circuit will start june 21st through july 6th then july 12th through the 27th and then proving grounds qualifiers will will not start for a couple more weeks after that from august 9th to the 19th again this coincides with the academy schedule where the academy teams will play out a regular season of their own then they'll do their playoffs in august so june 2nd to july 29th i think they play they play wednesdays and thursdays so they'll start next week um and they'll basically be playing the two days before the lcs so they'll follow pretty much the lcs schedule um then they will get into proving grounds in uh, in september so uh there's a lot of games for these you know players to prove themselves and to give themselves the opportunity um you know, uh, like I said, TSM right now are one and one. Um, they're tied for second with Evil Geniuses Prodigies. Um, they technically should be above them because they've dropped one, one less game. But um, the big reason that they're they're not is because uh, they haven't played them yet. So they've got a big game on Monday actually, which I hope will be streamed, uh, where. You know, if TSM Amateur can can win that series, then they will uh, make it to the next level. Because I believe it's the the top two teams. Let me make sure this is right. Yeah, so eight teams, so the top two from each group, will make it to the next round. Uh, it looks like Area of Effect have pretty much locked their spot because they still only have to play Revival, um, which Revival's been pretty bad. They've only taken one game off of Evil Genius's Prodigies this whole time, so far at least. So I would assume Area of Effect makes it, so then, uh, you know, well, they definitely make it, yeah. Yeah, they definitely make it. So Area of Effect are already through to the next round. Um, so the am you know TSM Amateur and Evil Genius's Prodigies will have to go at each other to figure out who's going to make it. And I think that's going to be super interesting and very important. Um, it's looking like in Group B, it's going to be Golden Guardians, Academy, um, and 100 Thieves next that are making it. As a reminder for those of you who remember this guy, Gamsu, um, ex-Fanatic, a League of Legends player, ex-Overwatch League player, now coming back, has made his way to the starting lineup for 100 Thieves next and is trying to be like 25 or 26 and push his way to an LCS spot. He's a super talented player, so... I think somebody will give him a shot at one point or another, but he's got to prove himself here. Um, so that's definitely a story to watch. It looks like, um, you know, it looks like those will be the two teams, but Resolve NA could be the first non... Well, no, that's not true. Uh, oh, Resolve is made up of some former Academy players too and some Academy hopefuls. So they're actually looking pretty good too. So we'll have to see. They're one and one as well. Um, they lost to no. They beat hundred thieves. No, did they lose to hundred thieves? Yeah, no, they beat hundred thieves and lost to Golden Guardians Academy. So Resolve could actually be the ones uh, making their way there because uh, hundred thieves have to play Golden Guardians, and if Golden Guardians beat them, then Resolve and Resolve beats Dignitas Mirage, and they'll win. Anyway, sorry. These are just interesting things that I'm going over really quickly. Uh, C9 Amateur, no surprise, doing pretty well. They're 2-0. Uh, Maryville, which is a huge surprise. Normally, they're very, very good. Um, they are currently not looking very good. 
they are uh, currently 0-2. Um, and then you got another wild card gaming, another area of effect team, it looks like, and Supernova. And then Radiance, which is owned by, um, I want to say High. I think that's the team that's owned by High. Yeah, it's High. Okay, so that's High's team. So, excuse me, a lot of interesting uh, teams, you know, right now um, that are being played. Uh, a lot of interesting games that are being played in amateur. Um, you'll see some pretty crazy things come out in terms of the uh, comps and whatnot too. Um, and I, I just, I love this system. I'm glad that they're finally attaching, um, you know, the amateur scene to the academy scene. I think that's going to be a really good way for us to build things up and, and kids will see that, Hey, like I'm playing league of legends. Can I go pro in this? Yeah. Here's, here's a very clear way to do it. You get on a team, you know, maybe you don't make it in split one. That's fine. Then hopefully you get picked up by a better team in, in split two. So, um, a, a lot of, different awesome things going forward for the amateur scene i really 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 hope that they are able to make it um oh yeah okay i did find this so their game against tsm academy's game um will be um let me see who are they playing again brain fart um against evil geniuses prodigies will actually be on twitch.tv backslash academy so the academy channel will have their game on monday so let's go out support them um i believe that they're starting at 6 p.m eastern is um what it's looking like as well so yay awesome all right i'm gonna spend these last three minutes i'm gonna talk about next week's episode i'm gonna try adding some new things i am have been kind of cultivating some different things in my brain and my nog in there um i am going to try to add them in next week uh, now next week's show is going to be a long one. We've got a lot of things to go over with the season getting started. So, you know, kind of be prepared for that, but also be ready for some new things. Um, look out for a giveaway. Yes, you heard me right. I will be doing a giveaway. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is yet. You could probably guess, but yeah, I will be doing a giveaway, uh, starting next week. Um, you know, I will be doing predictions outside of the schedule. So things like MVP, you know, TSM's MVP, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, as I look at the schedule more, my thoughts may change favorably or unfavorably for TSM. It's going to really just depend on what rosters are confirmed. Um, also, the Talking TSM Fantasy League will be starting next week. If you have interest, let me know. I've already gotten most of the players from last season to let me know that they're coming back uh there are i think two people currently in the queue uh you know waiting for a spot so uh i will know my goal is to know by monday then we will probably draft on wednesday that is the hope um yeah if you like the show please take a second to like subscribe and comment if you're watching on our youtube channel hit the bell icon so you don't miss another episode uh, let's keep supporting this. If you guys don't mind on uh, all podcasting platforms, reviews are absolutely appreciated. Share this with your friends. Um, that will be a major part of the um, giveaway is sharing this and all TGH stuff. So get ready for that. You can find me at TGH Robert Haynes or T the Game House's Twitter at TGH Esports. Lastly, head to thegamehouse.com. I've got a really interesting piece coming out, I think today or tomorrow, um, under the TSM page. You might even see it probably on TSM's Reddit. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, with that, thanks for tuning in. The show comes out every Thursday for now. Um, we'll see. Might go back to two. Haven't decided yet. I will let you guys know for sure about that next week. Um, and it's still exclusively for your TSM ear holes. I'm Robert Haynes, and this has been Talking TSM. See you next week.